Well, thank you for the opportunity to, to give a, a presentation on a pesticide example. So two, two examples. In, uh, in Brazil and India, data protection is a key factor. So Brazil has an effective 10-year data protection uh, in place, just like the US and Europe. India today has no protection of regulatory data. So in terms of the, the yields for the cotton, it can be clearly seen in the, uh, in the red bars for Brazil that the yield is much higher because there, there's much more innovation, much more products that can uh, protect the, uh, the pests. There are also more uh, active ingredients, so the, uh, the farmer has more choice of which products he wants to use. And as a result, on the, on the right-hand side, you see that the land which is needed to, to grow cotton is much higher in India because there's a lack of innovation, there's a lack of opportunity to, uh, to control the pests. So, so that's a clear, distinct example which shows that uh, when innovation is rewarded through data protection by submitting regulatory information for pesticides, it has a significant benefit for the, uh, for the yield and a reduction in, uh, in land use. The regulation we have, 1107-2009, uh, for pesticides has been in force since, uh, since June 2011, so it's quite, uh, it's quite young. So it concerns the uh, approval of active substances in the pesticides and the authorization of products. And key relevant articles for data protection, articles 59 to uh, 62, and article 63 is dealing with uh, confidentiality and uh, confidentiality business information protection. In these, in these articles, we have provisions for 10 years data protection if the data is new and has been done to good laboratory practice or good experimental practice. There are provisions to protect against duplicate vertebrate testing through compensation. So nobody should repeat vertebrate studies and if a request is made for compensation for access to uh, a, a study, then uh, the access must be given and compensation can be generated. It's mentioned that that should be done in a fair, transparent and discriminatory way, as was mentioned by REACH uh, provisions, but we don't have any experience yet of what really is the definition of fair and, uh, and, and transparent. That's, uh, that, that, that's too early. We don't really have any, any cases. And there are also uh, provisions for confidentiality for protecting the confidential business information uh, as described by the previous speakers. It's, it's the same, the composition statement, the manufacturing process, specific information on impurities, for example. And each sector in, uh, in Europe has different procedures for protecting intellectual property, which includes different procedures for protection of regulatory data in the pharmaceutical sector, in the biocide sector, uh, pesticide sector, and, and of course REACH has already been covered. But REACH is more a data compensation process rather than a data protection scheme. So in summary, intellectual property, it's a major asset of, uh, of companies, whether it be biocides, whether it be uh, REACH, pesticides. The pesticide science evolves uh, on a regular basis and uh, we have a lot of uh, new guidance documents for new scientific risk assessment, particularly in Europe. So we need to generate new data and uh, submit those. And modern agriculture can, uh, can grow. It be, can be uh, sustainable for farmers uh, worldwide, so long as the innovations and uh, the data are protected. And as I hope uh, I've been able to show with a few examples this afternoon, if there's no data protection, uh, there's no innovation, and then unfortunately uh, the, uh, the agriculture becomes uh, less sustainable. <laughs>